We're talking today with Nancy Svela and Diane Van Gulick, and we've been talking about Alzheimer's and dementias, the various dementias. And Diane, you were saying that Nancy's going to be um, coming over and, and talking to mm -hmm. a support group right. and giving them some tips for the holidays right. if they're the caregiver for someone with a dementia or Alzheimer's. Nancy, what are some of those tips? Could you <laughs> well, you know, it, uh, a lot of it varies on what stage of the disease your loved one is, mm -hmm. is in. But sometimes we need to look at um, our normal holiday routines. Is there some ways we can simplify those things? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, I always say, if someone has advanced memory loss, they don't do very well in a crowd. Sure. So it may be better to do a smaller gathering of just two to four people. Um, when you have memory issues, a lot of times you don't process fast enough. So if you're in a big group and someone's talking over here and then someone hollers at you from over here, well, you're still over here trying to process this and then you've got this new information and, and the brain just doesn't work enough. So usually simpler settings will do. If you're going to a family gathering with your loved one, um, introduce them and say oh honey you remember Rose you know mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. you know we used to live right by them and try and give them clues to kind of maybe help spark a little bit of that memory um, and then um, some of the other things if you're going out to eat with your loved one a lot of times um, you can have a, especially if they have advanced memory loss you can pass a little card to the waitress and just says please be patient my loved one has memory or, or disorders and and if you can, try to know in advance what your loved one will eat. And mm -hmm. when you go in and just say, oh, we don't need menus, he's going to have and I'm going to have this. And try right. and make it as simple as possible. Um, and, and it's just, I think sometimes the commotion, mm -hmm. you know, it's a time mm -hmm. to simplify a little bit. Probably, probably would be very scary for someone with dementia, I would imagine. It is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Going into a room, especially if they're going to a room, you know, people they haven't seen in 30 years. They may mm -hmm. not recognize anyone in there. Even family members. Yeah. And, and right. yeah. So Which. And that's always the hardest part when they get to the point they don't recognize their spouse. You know, they think they are living with a stranger mm -hmm. or, or their kids. Um, that's usually when I actually see it really affect caregivers is that day when their spouse doesn't recognize mm -hmm. them. And I don't know, you've probably noticed yeah, that too. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a that's a tough time. It yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. So. And you mentioned early on about um, putting a, a younger photo on the door, let's say the bedroom door, mm -hmm. for someone that's with Alzheimer's because they're not, they're older. Right, they don't self. recognize themselves. They're probably mm -hmm. locked in time somewhere in their, mm -hmm. who knows where, teens, 20s, 30s. Yeah, so. It's kind of like reverting backwards, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and mirrors, mirrors in the house can be very confusing to someone with advanced memory loss. And never so, thought of yeah, it. yeah, I tell patients, especially if they have a lot of them or if the memory loss mm -hmm. is getting very bad, you know, a lot of us have decorator mirrors and, and the thing is they walk by it and they don't recognize that person. So then they start to think someone's in the house with them. So mm -hmm. I tell people a lot, if you have a lot of mirrors, it'd probably be beneficial to take them down because it's just confusing to them. Right. So what are some of the signs for someone with early onset? of dementia or Alzheimer's. Okay. Well, um, one of the first things we see is um, memory that starts to disrupt our everyday life. Um, maybe someone who's played cards every Wednesday all of a sudden now shows up at the wrong day or time mm -hmm. or forgets to go all together. Someone mm -hmm. who maybe forgets their doctor's appointments two or three times in a row or they forget their lunch or we're supposed to meet someone for lunch and they forgot. That's usually one of the earlier signs we see. Um, forgetting words, you know, looking at that chair and you can't think, oh, what is that called? I can't think of the name of that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, getting lost in sentences. This is where um, we start to see people, um, people talk, they lose their train of thought and it just goes away, never comes back to them. And this would be more consistent because I think we've all I know as we age, um, I can, you know, yay, oh, yeah. that you will forget things or you'll place something going, what on earth was I, where was my was mind <laughs> when I put that in there? Mm -hmm. You know, that, mm -hmm. but that's different than what you're it talking about. It is different, about. yes, yeah, so there is much difference. Um, 
The difference is, like someone, you put something down or you set your keys somewhere and you go and you can trace your steps back and mm -hmm. think, okay, where was I today? Oh, I was in the family room. Maybe yeah. I set them in there. And, and sure enough, you find them. With someone with memory loss with a little more severe problem, they can't reason that way. Okay. And, and they, then the keys, they lose their keys a lot. They're having to get more keys made. Um, eventually, sometimes they don't even know what the key's for. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a little more significant. Then we know we're having big trouble. Or if someone, um, say, they're putting the milk, they found that they put the milk in the cabinet with the dishes, you know, and didn't find it for a day or two. And that's, that's what I call really unusual places, mm -hmm. you know, or their wallet in the refrigerator, yeah. or, you know, or they're constantly... Completely yes, out of yeah, context. Yeah, just mm -hmm. out of context. From what it should be. We all get a little forgetful. Yeah. And sometimes it takes us a little longer to retrieve things, but it's there and we can do it. Mm -hmm. And so you might not be able to think of that person's name when you see them. And sure enough, as soon as they walk away, you're like, oh yeah, that's Mary. Now yeah. I remember. But a person with um, really advanced memory loss probably wouldn't be able to do that. Um, another symptom that we see sometimes is trouble with driving. And this is always such a tough topic, but um, maybe their favorite grocery store. They've been going there for 20 years and all of a sudden today they can't remember how to get there and they pass it up. Or it, they have trouble remembering how to find their way home and they've made several long, Ooh, wrong that's turns. that's really frightening for yeah. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we try to explain to people that, you know, I know it, they don't want to quit driving, but sometimes when we're forgetful, we don't remember that we made those mistakes 30 mm -hmm. minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And so our concern is um, with the visual spatial, a lot of times they may think that car is back there where it's actually right here and then they pull out in front of it. Or are they going to remember which is the gas pedal versus the brake? And so if you're starting to have a lot of trouble driving, um, getting lost, so that's kind of a significant sign. Um, trouble working equipment at home, like your microwave. Mm -hmm. You've used a microwave forever, never had any trouble, or your washing machine. Of course, now I know people keep getting all these new, really high <laughs> fangled high tech. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. But it's something that you've had for a long time, and you're, you can't remember how to work your microwave. You know, that's a little more something's going on, should be investigated. And our concern at Fairlam is we want people to get their memory checked early. Don't wait till it's really advanced. Mm -hmm. You know, th th we do have medicines. The medicines do help for a while. They, they're not always effective, but sometimes they, they'll help keep you functioning they at a higher the level. They slow process a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if we could catch people three years earlier, usually people when we see them will have memory loss probably about four to five years when the family really gets thinking about it and they'll say, yeah, I remember mom was a little forgetful. You know, she would tell me the same thing every time I called her. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the little more significant. And you've touched on another topic where all our kids are spread all over the country in many cases and there's usually only that contact for even if it's a once a week phone call or the holidays. But that might be a good time to really pay attention it for, would be. for um, you know, daughters and sons that are coming home to visit, that kind of thing, to see if mom or dad are having some challenges. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And, and you know, that we're very fortunate to have a lot of resources. Um, but getting back to the phone call, you know, a lot of times you call, and I call my mom a lot, and mm -hmm. I'll say, oh, how you doing, mom? Oh, I'm doing just fine, you know. And you really don't ask anything specific, you know. Yeah. But then if you, I always tell families that live out of state, because I get calls and say, well, they don't seem that bad. And I say, well, next time you talk to them, ask them what their doctor said at their last appointment, or when was their last appointment? Get a little more specific to mm -hmm. short term, or what did they have for dinner last night? And, and usually they won't be able to tell you. But just to talk in generalizations, uh, people can fool you pretty well for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, and, and it sometimes really hits people of high intelligence, does oh, it not? Oh, we see it. It does not yeah. discriminate. It, it's Doctors, PhDs. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. I do have to say, though, someone of a higher intelligence sometimes can compensate better. Yeah, that's just what I was and thinking. And they adjust a, a better along the way, so people mm -hmm. don't really notice it until the disease gets pretty advanced mm -hmm. because they're just able to work their way around things. Yeah. They can cover it up pretty well with 
um, selecting other words or mm -hmm. um, refining doing other ways to complete the task, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but they're still able to complete it. So, yeah. So that, that can be a tough thing, but um, we're very fortunate. We work with Dr. Parrish out of, from Little Rock mm -hmm. that comes in. She's a neuropsychologist and, and she actually does some more advanced testing. So um, I feel very thankful to have that service in our area because prior to the clinic, people were having to tra travel three to four hours to get their mm -hmm. testing. Well, you do the actual, you do a lot of testing. I do, right well, the I do. When they first come in, yeah. um, I usually screen them. Mm -hmm. We do a screening test and we, we really, we check their mobility, we check how well they're functioning at home, we um, do balance testing and, and then we do the memory test. And, and part of what I tell people, part of what I do is, we look to make sure there's not other disease processes causing the memory loss. Mm -hmm. Something that we can fix, you know, maybe sure. their thyroid's underactive or um, they have a vitamin B12 deficiency or there's just something going on. Maybe they have a low sodium, something, urinary yeah. tract infection. And a lot of times people are simply depressed and they just can't think well. So anyway, so once we rule out all that, um, we determine do they need the advanced testing mm -hmm. and so and which we do a lot of that and and to help determine you know whether it's a vascular memory loss versus an Alzheimer's type memory loss um, sometimes we do a lot of competency testing there mm -hmm. to see or and staging. And this is all at the Fairland Clinic? It is, it yeah. is, yeah, yeah. so but I, but and I think your goal too is we'd like to reach people younger and not you know with people we have a lot of memory loss in people in their 50s and early 60s and you know we need yeah. to reach out and I know through your programs they just you do such a great job and we, we have lots of um, topics educational topics that we cover but one of the things I, I think a lot of people I've noticed with our caregivers they don't realize uh -huh. that they can utilize is our exercise classes for their loved oh. ones with with dementia That's we wonderful. have um, Alzheimer clients, Parkinson's, mm -hmm. we, we accommodate them very, you know, very well. And um, it's a great socialization opportunity it for them too. Is. And our caregivers, they, they bring their spouse in usually is what, is what we have. And um, they can drop them off to let them exercise and they will go run errands. Oh. So, you know, so it's, it works good for supervised both. while yes. getting healthy. And yes. Diane, if someone wanted to reach you, what number do they need to call? Yes, they can call 508-3880. Okay. That's at the Maroc Family Education Center on Aging. Wonderful, wonderful. Or they could go online, um, baxterregional.org, check mm -hmm. out our website, the calendar's there. It's got all the support group information there. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. And Nancy, any more tips before we have to close today? <laughs> uh, we could talk for hours you know, on this topic. It's such this a broad a topic and there's yes. just so much information out there. And, and I, I read all the time. I'm always reading about different studies and stuff. But I think one of the biggest tidbits that a caregiver can do is educate yourself. Mm -hmm. Really try to know and know in advance that when you do see a change and you can say, okay, this is part of the disease, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I tell people, you just have to remind yourself that this is the disease talking, that mm -hmm. your loved one would not say this right. if, you know, if right. they didn't have memory issues. But, but I think education is such a, an important role. It's and the real key, isn't it? It really is. The more you educate yourself, the better you're going to cope with the disease and establishing that support. Mm -hmm. Can we continue this on another show? Will you please come back and visit us again? I yeah, would love to. All yes, right. Great. All right. And thank you for joining us today for BRMC's Healthy Connections. We'll see you again next week.